Hello, and welcome back to the Illumination Talks. Uh, and today, just for a change, we're going to talk about global warming. Uh, why global warming, you ask? Well, because one of the central topics of these talks is the fact that academia is being economical with the truth. Uh, so not only historians and theologians, but scientists as well. Lying by omission, as we said in the last talk. And this is one of those cases. Um, oh, and you're going to probably ask, what does Ralph Ellis know about um, climate and global warming? Well, actually, I have um, written a peer review science paper on paleoclimate. So, and it was published a couple of years ago. It's very successful. Uh, something like 22,000 people have so far downloaded my science paper. So it's quite an influential paper. So I'm officially a climate scientist. Uh, but as usual, I'm a, a bit of a heretic because I don't believe that uh, CO2 is the major feedback agent warming the atmosphere. Uh, but we'll go into that in more detail later. We're not going to talk about that paper at uh, present. Um, just for now, we're going to look at the basics of climate as we see it, the climate that we see in the media, in the newspapers, on the television, on dear old CNN, or the BBC for that matter, because they are just as bad. Um, so, climate science. Science is about truth and honesty, giving the people the people out there, because this is from the media, the facts about the world around us. We have to trust the science, because we can't do all of these measurements ourselves. We can't even look it up ourselves. We don't have enough time. We have to rely on the media to give us the facts. So we can draw uh, the correct conclusions, our conclusions, because, after all, it's our taxes that pay for this. We pay higher taxes, we pay higher energy costs, we have industries being closed down, like the coal industry, steel industry, even the aluminium industry in Britain has all gone because of uh, global warming taxes. We even now have Drax. Drax is, is the biggest power station in the UK, four gigawatts, I mean, that's quite a big power station, it is now a wood-burning stove. So what we're doing now is instead of burning coal, which used to come from the coal field underneath Drax, uh, we're now chopping down every single forest in America, uh, forming it into sort of wood chips, shipping it all over to Britain in, in, in I don't know, I think it was about four or five ships they're shipping it over in, and then trucking it by train to Drax, where they finally burn it in the Drax power station. And so Drax now is putting out more CO2, something like 30% more CO2 than it ever did before. That is climate politics for you. Anyway, we're not looking at that today. We're just going to look at the data, the actual facts as given to us, day by day, on the television. And I'm sorry to tell you that scientists in the media are being far from honest. They are cherry-picking information and leaving out essential items that they don't want you to know about. So let's have a look at some of those items. Uh, snowfall, for instance. Well, we, we know, as well, everyone will know, I'm sure, that uh, snowfall is decreasing because of global warming. So the, you know, the atmosphere is warmer, so there is less snow. And that's why David, uh, Dr. David Viner, who was the uh, professor at uh, CRU, uh, which is the Climate Research Unit at University of East Anglia, one of the um, big climate universities, uh, said in 2001 that our children would not know what snow is because of global warming. OK, so let's look at the data, the real data. And the first graph here is uh, just coming up now is uh, Northern Hemisphere Autumn Snow Extent. 
we're off to a bad start, aren't we? Because the um, autumn snow extent for the whole of the Northern Hemisphere has been increasing. And that's since 1967. It's still increasing. Uh, and this data is real data. This is from the Rutgers Snow Lab, which holds the data for NOAA. So this is the official data for uh, climate scientists, in this case for snow extent. And snow is increasing. Well, in the autumn anyway. Well, let's have a look at the whole of the winter. So the next graph uh, gives us winter snow extent. And again, we see that the data says that snow extent has been increasing. Not so much as in the autumn, but it's still been increasing since 1967. So why were climate scientists trying to scare us with the fact that we would have no snow and our children would not know what snow is? So we're really not off to a good start here, but never mind, we'll persevere, we'll see what we've got. Uh, let's look at um, polar sea ice, because we all know that the sea ice is melting, the polar bears are going to die. Um, well, that's what the CNN and BBC have been telling us for several decades now. Um, so here is the graph. So this is the graph from 1978 to 2014. It has to start in 1978 because that was the beginning of uh, the satellite record. And as you see, sea ice is increasing. Interesting. Do you see what I've done there? Yeah, if you read it, this is Antarctic sea ice, not Arctic sea ice. Okay, so in the Arctic it might be decreasing, but why didn't they tell you that in the Antarctic sea ice has been growing? This is the graph up until 2014. Okay, well I don't want to cherry pick myself, so let me give you the full facts. So the next graph is both poles coming right up to date. So the next graph, here we go. Um, in the blue, in the blue corner as it were, we have the data that they want to give you, which is Arctic sea ice, and as you can see, that has been reducing. But the inconvenient truth that they don't want to tell you is the red graph, and as you can see, that's been rising since 1978. Okay, it's fallen in 2016, and it fell quite substantially, but is rising again. But if you look at the trend line, the trend line is still increasing for Antarctic sea ice. So we'll see what happens to this sea ice in future years. But what they did not tell you is that Antarctic ice has been increasing. OK, what else can we look at? Well, uh, I know. Uh, let's go and have a look at uh, tornadoes, because that's always a good subject, isn't it? We have those on the television all the time, and we see all these dramatic videos of towns being destroyed, shopping centers destroyed, even you know running through the center of a city and destroying the whole of the center of a city. I mean, it's a problem that's obviously getting much worse. Um, and it's all down to global warming. Uh, and we know that because they've told us. Climate scientists have told us. The media has told us. Reporters have told us. They're continually saying, this is due to global warming. And we're getting all of these terrible, terrible uh, tornadoes that are getting worse and worse year by year. So uh, here is the graph of tornadoes. And as you see, just as they said, since 1954, tornado numbers have been decreasing. Hmm, interesting. Uh, this, this graph here, um, this is um, courtesy of Mark Perry from AEI, because NOAA have stopped, I mean, this is real NOAA data. This is, this is the actual data from NOAA, but NOAA have stopped making these graphs easily available in 2014. So now you've got to make your own graph because they won't make it for you. Um, and this is for strong tornadoes. So this is F3 to F5. 
And as you can see, since 1954, the number of tornadoes, strong tornadoes, has been decreasing. And as you see this little arrow in the right-hand corner there, uh, this is 2018, the lowest ever on record. Hmm. Not quite the information they've been giving us, is it? Not quite the information. In effect, we're being deceived. And we're being deceived doubly because let's look at the correlation between tornadoes and global warming because that's the inference they've made, that there is a correlation, that it is warming that is causing more tornadoes. So let's look at the um, next graph, which has the temperatures superimposed on it. So uh, the, the top graph is, is temperatures. Uh, this is US, average temperature, um, during the tornado season, of course. And this is the tornado graph underneath it. Is that a correlation? Or is that an inverse correlation. Clearly, you can see from these two graphs that strong tornadoes are not being generated by rising temperatures. So the science as it's being given to us is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong again. And anyone who says that global warming is causing more tornadoes is a liar. And if they're looking for more money, i.e. politicians, if they want to pick your pockets, they are committing fraud because they're getting money on the basis of a lie. Well, OK, so we've had no luck with snow and no luck with tornadoes, but we all know that the number of cyclones, tropical cyclones, hurricanes and, um, and typhoons are definitely increasing. Again, we know this because it's been on their news for decades now. All of these terrible cyclones running through the Caribbean, running through America, causing all of this devastation. And it's getting worse. It's getting worse. We know it is. Because they tell us so. Ah. OK. Well, here's the graph by um, Dr. Ryan Mel, who is uh, the specialist in tropical cyclones. And um, yes, OK. Hmm. OK, well, the top line the, uh, with the blue uh, straight line running through it is the total number of hurricanes, uh, tropical cyclones, that's hurricanes and typhoons together, since 1980. And the number of cyclones has been reducing since 1980. OK, the, the little bit at the bottom with the green line going through it is the number of strong cyclones. And you might say, hooray, look, look, they've been increasing. Look, the green line is going up a little bit, if you squint, perhaps. Hmm. OK, well, that's not the full story, really, because in terms of generating cyclones, what we want to know is the total energy that's involved, not the total numbers but how much energy is being generated in these huge, great storms. Um, so let's look at the total energy graph. And this time it goes uh, from 1970, so it goes back even further, uh, up to 2018. So here's the graph. And you'll see from 1970, it rises. It does. It rises. It rises up until 1996, roughly. And then from 1996 to 2018, it sort of um, reduces. So where is this great increase in hurricane intensity, tropical cyclone intensity? It's just not there. The total energy in tropical cyclones has been reducing since 1996. And do remember that America had its longest ever period without a landfall hurricane. 11 years without a hurricane since uh, Katrina, uh, until the one that they had a couple of years ago. And, and you mention this to people, and they say, no, 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 it's not true. 
it's true. America had its longest ever period without a, a landfall hurricane for 11 years after Hurricane Katrina. That is the truth. So, you can see, in, in the many cases I've just presented to you in a very, very short amount of time, uh, all of the data that you've been given in the media has been cherry-picked. And it's been done so to deliberately promote a global warming agenda. And that's not science. That's political activism. That's picking your pocket of your taxation money or your energy money, because all of your energy now costs more. Um, and you could have been given the, tr the truth, of course, very quickly. Oh, we've done it in 10, 15 minutes. Why didn't the CNN and the BBC do it in 10 or 15 minutes? They could have done this years ago, but they didn't. They like to keep you in the dark. Had enough of this? Well, there's just one more thing that I must share with you. And that's Michael Mann's famous hockey stick. This is the temperature graph that started all of this many, many years ago. And you only have to look at this graph and, and think of tangled webs being weaved. I mean, look at it. it it's, it's virtually constant and then suddenly pff, it zooms up in the 20th century into the 21st century. Is that real? Well, <clears throat> no, it's not really. And of course, before we go on to this graph, what they will not tell you is that the Holocene maximum, which was 9,000 years ago, was much warmer than now. It's two degrees warmer than it is now. And that's only 9,000 years ago. That's not a long time in terms of climatic history. But that's another story. We're not going to go into that today. We're going to look at this hockey stick graph. And what this graph is, is a reconstruction of past temperatures all the way from 81,000. Uh, up to the modern time, using tree rings as a temperature proxy. So they measure the tree rings, and by the width of the tree rings, they get a proxy for temperature, and then they can display this temperature on the graph. But there was a problem, because when they made this graph, when it got to the end of the 20th century, it actually showed cooling. That was the decline that they tried to hide. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So the mathematical model that made this graph was, was tweaked, and, and, and effectively it rejected trees that showed any cooling. And in the end, it ended up heavily relying on a single tree in the Yamal uh, Peninsula called Yad 061. And so the warming that they achieved in the late 20th century was due to one tree. Not a good way of making a temperature graph. Anyway, but that was not quite good enough because it didn't really show much. It wasn't a scary graph. It wasn't a hockey stick. So what they ended up doing is splicing in the temperature data from thermometers, the modern temperature data, and they splice that in to the end of the tree ring data. Um, and yes, there was a, a famous quote from the um, uh, Climate Gate emails about this from Phil Jones. This was uh, 16th of November 1999, and he was writing, I think, to Michael Mann it was, and he said, um, I've just completed Mike's trick of adding in the real temperatures to each series for the last 20 years to hide the decline. What was the decline? The decline was the decline in temperatures, the cooling in the late 20th century that the tree ring data showed. So they hid that data by using thermometer data. And this, this is not science. Splicing in two different temperature data sets and not telling us about it is not science. And that's important because take away that hockey stick bit, the, the thermometer data, and the original tree ring data did not show um, 
um, a great deal of warming in the late 20th century. And it didn't show the medieval warming period. It didn't show the uh, Little Ice Age. It didn't show much of anything. And if tree ring data is not showing the correct temperatures in the modern era, how can we use it to show past temperatures? It's a nonsense, isn't it? Because if you think about it, trees are not very good temperature gauges. Trees are affected by moisture, canopy cover, sunlight, you know, the amount of uh, sun that the leaves are capturing, nutrients, pests, and um, perhaps temperature. But is temperature the main component that, that produces tree ring growth? I mean, if you have a hot, dry summer, is a tree going, going to grow well? Or will it grow better if you have a cooler, wetter summer where there's plenty of moisture? I would put it to you that a tree would grow better in the latter. So the tree rings are not showing. They're not a good proxy for temperature. Indeed, you can see this even within one tree trunk. I mean, here is a tree trunk. So we've, we've got a standard slice through a tree trunk and you can see all the tree rings and each ring is supposed to be uh, a thermometer. The wider the ring, the better the tree is growing, therefore obviously the warmer the temperature. Well, that's what we're being told. So here we have tree rings. And if we look where the arrow is, the yellow arrow up there, uh, in the sort of um, three o'clock position, you'll see a whole series of very, very small rings. So it must have been cold in that era. The tree was not doing very well. It wasn't growing very fast. It was a cold era for whatever that is, 20 years or so, it was cold. But if we look at that same tree trunk and now look at the 12 o'clock position where the blue arrow is, we shall see that those same tree rings are now much larger. So was it cold or was it warm? It depends where you take your bore. Uh, what they do is they, they have a core and they'll, they'll core through the center of the tree. Um, and the core isn't very wide, you know, it's only about uh, just over a centimeter wide. So if they took a core from the three o'clock position, they'd say it's cold. But if they took a core from the 12 o'clock position, they would say it's warm. Tree rings do not show temperature very well. They show many other things, and if anything, they probably show moisture more than they do temperature. So the whole of the hockey stick graph is a complete nonsense. And in fact, it was withdrawn from the IPCC um, because complaints were made about its uh, data collection, its procedures, the math mathematical models that actually underpinned it were all challenged. And basically the IPCC has dropped it. So the, the, the main graph to start the global warming uh, scare stories by Al Gore has effectively been dropped. It's no longer used. So the whole of the global warming uh, enterprise is, is based on a lie, a graph that is no longer used. So this is the state of climate science. And I have to say, of course, you know, we've been going through this with, with other fields, with historians and theologians, and we're seeing a trend here that we can't necessarily rely on academia to give us the full and whole truth. Now, I can't state categorically that CO2 does not warm the atmosphere. It might do, although my peer review science paper comes very close to proving that it doesn't. But that's another story. However, cherry picking the facts and the data is not the way to prove a, a point in science. This is not science. This is political activism. And we should treat it as such. Ignore it, basically. Academia is lying to us by omission as you've seen in the past videos. And that's why you must view these videos, just to get the other side of the story. It's interesting, isn't it, that you have to come to videos by myself 
to get the historical, theological, and science truth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short talk, and I hope you will uh, join us on our next path to illumination and enlightenment. Thank you.